Many businesses fail because they don't understand what their customer is buying. And they certainly don't even know that that's what they're selling. By far, the number one thing that your customers are buying, trust. And you build trust using these five foundations. Let me illustrate the first foundation. It's by far the most important by my personal story. hardest year of my life. Our income took a beating and rapidly declined. I began to worry about my finances for the first time in my life. Many sleepless nights of worry if I'd earn even enough to pay our simple bills. I beat myself up thinking I was a poor provider and failure as a father and husband. Compounding our declining income, my wife's Parkinson's had took a turn for the worst. I witnessed how she could no longer perform simple tasks. One day, she broke down in tears because she couldn't even show her granddaughter how to sew. That, that broke my heart. She couldn't be the grandmother she wanted to. Opening a jar became impossible. Her tremors were constant and sucked all her energy. Some days, she would be relegated to resting on the couch all day. It became evident we could no longer take care of our big home or even afford it any longer. I was now doing so much more around our home. Tasks that Sue used to be able to do now landed upon me. We agonizingly decided to sell our dream home of 29 years. We built this home, raised our children here, a big home that we could have a big family get togethers in, a home we both thought we'd die in. Bad things always seemed to hit in threes. We had a major family tragedy that rocked our entire family. So sensitive, it requires complete privacy. For the first time in my life, I was in a deep downward spiral, depressed, heartbroken, scared physically and emotionally exhausted with all that I was enduring, taking care of Sue, trying to turn my business around and give the, uh, my family the love and support it needed. On top of the physically exhausting task of getting our home and lot ready to sell, at the end of my rope, I finally gave all these burdens to Christ. If anyone needed rest, it was me and our family. I leaned on his strength to provide me comfort and support. We were richly blessed to find our own buyer for our home who accepted our price, saving us 40 k in Realtors Commission. The extra money would be needed to get into another home without a mortgage. With a stiff seller market, prices were rising for the type of home we needed for Sue. Inventories were low. They would come on the market, seemingly fit our needs, and then be sold within a day. It became disheartening to see a perfect home be gone within hours of being listed. One home had come on the market one late afternoon. The next day, we looked at it. It already had an offer and several realtors had showed the property. It fit our needs so well. We said a prayer, asked God if he wanted us in this home to please make it work. We placed an offer that was accepted a few hours later. We closed 11 days later and moved in a week after that. Our family's crisis has stabilized and we are on firmer ground. Business picking up. I've had some of the best weeks in over two years. Why tell you my story? A few years ago, I would not have had the courage to tell you this. I would have been embarrassed. I would have hidden all the reasons for the move. Would have probably lied about my declining income. Did you connect with our pain? Did you feel you could trust my wife and I? Did you believe that if you could endure that, 
you could endure the struggles you'll face in building a business from home. A few years ago, I was hiding my shame behind heavy armor of perfectionism, people pleasing and trying to score acceptance by always wanting to perform. My self-acceptance, Sunil, I could put my self-worth in a thimble. When I first heard the word vulnerability, I thought of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength. Vulnerability is the new credibility. Have vulnerability without skills and you can uh, still succeed in influencing others. Vulnerability isn't about winning and losing. It's about having the courage to show up. Vulnerability is open to betrayal, rejection, criticism, failure, struggle, pain, lies, and still doing it anyway. It's not the same of the overused word authentic. Vulnerability is at the highest level of being. It's the core of a peaceful and joyful life. Experience a broken heart hurts, but it's really not broken. It's the heart's protective defenses breaking open to allow us to feel all emotions fully. When people open their hearts, they get better, they heal. It's the antidote to fear. Vulnerability, it's not allowing people to step on you or take advantage of you. On the contrary, it's strength to see reality and accepting your own imperfections and still understanding the struggles of the one trying to hurt you. This is true compassion. It's turning the other cheek as Christ taught in his Sermon on the Mount in the Bible. It's being aware. You don't have fractured parts, broken or strong. Hide the broken ones and only show the stronger ones. But that your being is whole, yet imperfect, and accepting your own humanity. Full, unconditional self-acceptance is the heart of vulnerability. As you accept all of you, especially the stuff that's not perfect or even failing, you accept others like the imperfect me. Vulnerability is the sauce of true leadership. Marianne Williamson's writing, Our Deepest Fear, she states, as we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Vulnerability liberates us of our own fear and thus just our presence automatically liberates others. Without vulnerability, there is no creativity or innovation. One must be open to rejection and criticism in order to create in a state of courage without fear. Without the courage to fail, one would never express creativity because of the possible pain of failure. We are hardwired to connect with other human beings. Our number one need is love and connection. No vulnerability, no connection. We connect through shared pain and struggle with empathy. We connect when we feel safe and trust abounds. Vulnerability is the birthplace of healing. Squash and numb out pain, hide behind heavy armor. You also numb out joy and the armor keeps it from your heart. Vulnerability is the expression and acceptance of pain and thus joy. Honor the struggle, gain joy and peace. Vulnerability, it's your superpower. Use it to serve others. Do you know the number one trait of a millionaire in America? Honesty. You can sell honesty. It's a valuable commodity in business. Everyone wants it, not everyone has it. It's a trait closely related to vulnerability. If one can have vulnerability, being fully transparent, exposed, and open, you can be assured it's honest. Being fake, it's exposed in a heartbeat. You can spot a fake a mile away. The armor people hide behind is always in full view, but they are the only ones that don't see it. 
self-promotion, fancy outsides, clothes, cars, home, status, glitz, and Hollywood glamour. Everything so perfect, crying out, look at me. But inside, scared, lonely, desperately needing affirmation. Armor is also shown in timidness, not showing up, hiding from truth, lack of boldness, living in fear, poverty, ill health, lack of love, even death. Without vulnerability, you see the symptoms of the lack of honesty. Trying to one-up everyone, a society of competition, always seeking the upper hand as a way to gain acceptance. Our society seems to believe the only way to acceptance is by success. If you're not a success, you're less than others. Being honest is a choice. Be wise and always be honest, even if it's going to hurt. Trust, like honesty, is in limited supply in America these days. If people trust you though, you'll be in high demand. Everyone craves trust, but not everyone has it to sell. It's in low supply, but high demand. That's a recipe for business success. Ever see a vulnerable politician, news media, even some boastful preachers? No vulnerability, no honesty equals no trust. In my opinion, these are the three least trusted institutions in America today. They earn that right not to be trusted. The formula for trust, vulnerability, plus honesty equals high trust. If I could show you two simple tips that have followed would substantially give you very positive results in your business, would you use them? The first, it's called the four keys to referability. It's taught to me by Dan Sullivan of the Strategic Coach Program. We all want to have others refer to us. Do this. One, do what you say you'll do. Two, when you say you're going to do it. Three, say please. Four, say thank you. Notice the elements of honesty there. Honesty builds trust. Humility, say please. Gratitude, say thank you. I used to have a quote in my CPA office. Create trust one kept promise at a time. Here is the second simple tip and it's free. When I was at a CPA conference years ago and learned this, I was floored. As a participant of the conference, we were asked, what is the number one reason people fire their CPA and hire a new one? Bunch of hands went up. No one guessed it. The number one reason CPAs lose clients they don't return phone calls. Can you believe it? Perhaps you might have said, like me, high fees, low service levels, lack of creative ideas. Nope, the CPA didn't return a call. Have you ever had a call, or today even a text, not return? I know when that happens to me, I feel like they don't care about me. I don't want to do business with people that don't care about me. Just return your calls and texts timely. <clears throat> if you get a call or text in the morning, return the call or text before noon. Get a call or text in the afternoon, return it before 5 p.m. Get a call or text after 5 p.m., return it before 9 p.m. I've had other distributors who won't get back to me for days, sometimes never. Honor your upline support, return their calls and texts, and you'll deserve the same from them. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Take these three attitudes and two tips and go to the top. Click the link for a free guide of the five foundations of business success. And if you know of somebody, members of your team, somebody that needs to hear this message, just please share this video with them.